Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name is Chris and this is A Glimpse Inside. Today's video, we're gonna be making this craft paper dispenser out of Baltic birch plywood and a piece of aluminum. In another video released at the same time, I'll have a link down below to where it is, we're gonna make this, or we're gonna restore this 1950s craft paper dispenser as well. So come join us on these two part series and see how we did it. Thank you so much for joining us and let's go. All right, we're gonna break down this piece of Baltic birch plywood and my camera's in the way. What a way to start a project. I'm only using about a third of this sheet of plywood and here I'm cutting it into one inch strips over and over. Now, to cut those cross sections on those strips, I set up a stop block on my table saw fence behind where the blade is and then I'm able to safely introduce those pieces into the blade and cut them exactly as I need them. The base pieces are 22 inches in length and you can see here I'm alternating every other one with these 10 and a half inch pieces that are going to make up the sides and I'm going to put some pieces in between the pieces on the sides to kind of give it some, you know, just a repeating pattern on each side but they're kind of going to be mirror images of each other and it's going to be a little abstract so I don't necessarily have any plans for this but I'm just building it as I go and hopefully it all turns out. The pattern I've come up with here is a stair-step design giving voids on the sides, giving the piece kind of a little bit more of a lighter feel if you will. A little glue, a little brads is all you need to put this together and I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side as you see here. With the sides already finished, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention to the base. I'm using just a sacrificial little spacer here to go ahead and give me the measurement I need. And every other one alternating between each piece of plywood just like this, kind of creating really large finger joints. Okay, then now that these pieces are made, these are kind of gonna represent big box joints, big finger joints, if you will. Uh, these are the sides, this is the base, and before I test it out, I'm gonna sand these down, get them nice and smooth. And again, I'm not following any plans, I haven't drawn anything out, I'm just kind of winging it, if you will. So, wish me luck. A little sanding now, we're gonna go from 120 grit up to 220 grit to try to remove all the saw marks from the edges of the plywood. Once it's all been sanded, I go ahead and do a dry fit and it looks pretty good so far. The finger joints or the box joints look pretty good. And absolutely, I made a mistake here. I am putting glue on a surface outside of the camera shot, but hey, it worked out because my camera died. But <laughs> that's the way it goes sometimes. So with some clamps on both sides of this piece, making sure the finger joints get even pressure, this thing turned out to be pretty solid. I let it dry for about two and a half, three hours, came back to it and was really happy with how it turned out. Now just to clean up the tops of each side, I'm gonna run just a kerf cut, if you will, on the crosscut sled on each side, just like this. I tell you, these little crosscut sleds are great. Maybe I should make a new one. Hmm. Make a mark on an oak dowel, three quarters of an inch in diameter. This is gonna be the dowel that's gonna hold the craft paper up, and these pieces here are gonna be the ones that are gonna hold the oak dowel in place to make sure that it spins freely. I'll explain a little bit more here in a second. All right, so sorry for the sunlight. I happen to be filming in a garage that is not heated or cooled, and it's a beautiful day, so I have it open. So check this out. The middle of this is exactly in between this piece here and this piece here. All right, the asymmetry of this whole thing makes it look a little off, but if we do this right, we're going to cut these pieces according to the right and left side so we don't lose that aesthetic that we've already created. So the middle of it is right here on this side and then conversely the same on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil from this side and simply draw where this cavity is. All right, that's that way on that side. And then I'll flip this around and do it on this one as well. Okay. All right, so essentially when these, this goes up here and this goes up here, they're gonna be the same piece, but they're gonna match up and they're not gonna lose the aesthetic we've worked so hard to achieve. Now over to the bandsaw to cut these pieces out and front and center, sticker on the bandsaw, the Moose Shop. Check out Mike's channel, he is a great guy and a great woodworker. I had a great conversation with him the other day. I'll link his channel down below. 
Taping pieces together, if you need to drill a hole through both of them, is definitely a one way to do it. You can use hot glue as well, but I chose blue painter's tape. And the hole I drilled was a little too shallow, so I'm cutting off the tops to accept the dowel, and that was exactly what I needed to make it fit just right. Now with them cut and ready to go, a little CA glue and a little activator is all I need to attach each dowel support piece to the side of the paper cutter. So now it's time to figure out how the paper is going to dispense easily and cut easily to make it convenient to use. And this idea actually is something I came up with while building the project. I had a completely different idea I was gonna use with a spring mounted hinge and all kinds of stuff, but it turns out that that wasn't really gonna work. So I came up with this little piece of aluminum here that's gonna be essentially attached to the bottom of the base. And we're just gonna drill some holes in it. We're gonna screw it in with a spacer in between and essentially run the paper through the wood and the aluminum. And hopefully this works. Here I'm just taking a larger drill bit to go ahead and countersink these holes. This way the screws fit flush and after a little bit of sanding, here we go. Hey guys, what's up? All right, so here's the deal. When you buy this aluminum at your big box store or wherever, it usually doesn't come exactly 90 degrees. It looks like it, but it's not. It has a very small curve on the ends, actually down the whole profile of this aluminum. I guess to break the edges so it doesn't cut anybody. Uh, but that's not what we want. We want this to cut, so I'm gonna hone this thing back to 90. How? I'm gonna attach it to a piece of plywood and it's gonna overhang just by about maybe a 16th of an inch and then I'm going to sand it down flush giving it a nice kind of rough uh, surface, if you will, that's 90 degrees that should cut the paper just fine. So let's do that now. Using the holes that I drilled, I'm gonna attach this to a scrap piece of plywood and sand it down with some sandpaper that's specifically used for metal. At this point, before I assemble everything, I'm gonna do some light hand sanding over the whole piece, kind of breaking all the edges, making it nice and smooth. Okay, for the spacers, I'm using a section of brad nails that's gonna hold it up, give me just enough space for the paper to fit in between the aluminum and the wood. And here we go, let's go ahead and do a trial run. Okay, before we finish it with spray lacquer and all that good stuff, we're gonna test it out. Uh, here we go. Okay, all right, that part works, okay. Now, for the cutting. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> How about them apples? <laughs> way too excited about this, but it works. What can I say, man? It's really great to see something come together and actually work. All right, so this is now a little Lacey Susan device I made with painter's triangles. You can buy these commercially, but they're actually pretty easy to make. Also, it makes spray lacquering or spray painting anything that's relatively small fairly easy. Now that the couple coats of spray lacquer have dried, I'm reattaching the aluminum cutter piece to the bottom. And in my test earlier, I was pulling the paper out and the paper cutter actually was moving across the table a little bit. So rubber feet should do the job to hold this in place while you're using it. Now it's time to set it up and do one last test. Yep. Held it in place, works really well. There's the final result, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Woo, he got a little bit scared. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching, guys. This project here, this was gonna be the only thing that I was gonna make this week. Uh, it's a restorative project, but it got me thinking, well, I can also use the other half of the craft paper roll, and I was gonna make something completely the opposite in design. However, it's gonna be the same in functionality, and we came up with that kind of modern Baltic verse design as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it. Also, there's going to be a few other videos over here you can check out on the channel. And also, I always invite you to subscribe. And if you want to support the show as well, there'll be links down below. Guys, thanks again. My name is Chris. This has been A Glimpse Inside. And we'll see you next time.